Hi guys, it's Bunny and welcome to today's video and welcome to another reaction. I am reacting to WWE content on this channel. A lot of these videos are recommended by you and this video as well has been recommended for a while now, you guys. One of the reasons I haven't done it yet is because it's a bit of a longer video and I don't know if it's gonna be copyrighted or not. I don't know if it's gonna be on Patreon or on my YouTube, but if it is on Patreon, then it is on patreon.com slash support bunny. You can go and check it out there it's december 27th 1987 and antonio Inoki is one of the biggest wrestling stars on the planet and the biggest in his home country of japan this is the man who fought muhammad ali to i love his draw, voice so much started new japan pro wrestling was a forefather of mixed martial arts and wow. would later in life even negotiate the release of japanese hostages from saddam hussein oh my Hero god barely touches it and Noki exactly. was an icon beloved by the nation of japan and at this point was enjoying a winning streak that had gone on for four years but tonight he uh -oh. faces something different the gigantic completely unknown foreigner who is big this van vader. big van vader and oh vader followed the audience at sumo hall would witness something horrifying as their icon is no. torn apart vader pummeling the national <sighs> into unconsciousness shattering his four-year win streak and all in just three oh my minutes oh my god in the three minutes were so enraged they <sighs> reportedly set their cushions on fire and hurled them into the center of the ring erupting in a riot so severe oh. that new japan would be banned from sumo hall for years oh. but none of that likely mattered because tonight what the promotion had done was create a monster invader vader a is hated for years would be hated by the people oh my japan. god imagine it was your job to walk out in front of tens of thousands of people and then make those people hate you as much as possible exactly and not only like that it is in the script for them to hate you but your whole persona goes beyond that like privately in your life you cannot do anything to destroy that image of hatred i would not be able to live with myself knowing that a lot of people hate me and that my job for people to hate me like i should be proud of it and happy about it i would be devastated that is the business of a heel wrestler something i've always been a little fascinated by and so in the third of a series of videos i may as well call no dad wrestling is for grown-ups why won't you look at me i want to talk about the strange part of <laughs> oh my god wrestling how oh they my make god us hate them and how they channel hatred into storytelling and to see how powerful an impact heels can have on audiences we need look no further than one of the first and best it's the early 1950s and you are a regular working class american joe you and your fellow countrymen are american in long joe backbreaking manual labor in order to pull the u.s out of the shadow of world war ii but on the weekends you and your buddies decide to blow off some steam by taking in a wrestling show and that's where you see him his hair quaffed into delicate gold. Oh my curls. god, look at his him. His luxurious robe adorned like with Cod. ruffles and roses. There's an arrogance to his stride as he stares down disdainfully at you and your working class brethren. And when he reaches the ring, he refuses to enter until a mink rug is laid down before oh. him and the canvas Diva. sprayed with perfume. This was gorgeous George, a gorgeous. world class heel. <laughs> Did he perhaps lean into some stereotypes that would later be found to be harmful? <laughs> hmm. What yes, does he mean? but was he a master at making the working class America of the 50s despise him? Absolutely. He would cheat, he would hide behind his female valet, and wow. he would refuse to acknowledge his own losses. The audience was so outraged after his first title win that he was swarmed and punched in the head. But if anything, that was only proof at how good a heel George was. Millions <laughs> would tune moves. in to watch a gorgeous George match to the point that he was instrumental in popularizing 
early televised wrestling. His impact could be condensed into a single piece of advice he gave to a 19-year-old Muhammad Ali. Oh my Ali, god! One that would echo not only throughout Ali's career, but through the entire future of wrestling. Nice. A lot of people will pay to see someone shut your mouth. This right here is the essence of heel wrestling. Oh, you don't have to be nice so or likable or anything. As long as the audience is booing, it doesn't matter how you got there. Yeah. Become a terrifying clown. Threaten to make people pay their taxes. Tell people pollution is bad. Or there's an incredible amount of creative freedom that comes with making people hate you and that freedom has led to some of the most exciting characters in wrestling the rock stone cold steve austin yeah. sean michaels becky lynch it was becoming villains and freeing themselves from audience expectation that gave them yeah. the freedom to create characters true. that would go on to define their that eras. is so true but like i remember when like i'm not, I'm not gonna compare myself with any of these legends all right but if i i usually like to put myself in these point of views because it helps me understand it better and it reminds me when i started with youtube i was so shy and so scared of any type of hatred and i was so scared of judgment and what people think and then the longer i started doing it the more comfortable and the more the more i settled into this job of doing it the way i want to do it uh without caring about these negative comments and hatred um, but to be honest with you guys, like it was so freeing once I like started not giving a poopsie about it and just going with the flow with what I think fits me. Um, it's so good. And that's what it is about the villains. Like you don't have to fit into like this mold of a person that is supposed to be a certain way. You can do whatever you want. It is so freeing. Too much freedom can also be a bad thing. And so True, before we understand too much, what's yep. good, we need to know what's bad. And to do that, what say we take a little trip to what <laughs> I like to call the Hall of Terrible Wrestling Heels. Oh, Santa yeah. Klaus was Santa's evil twin Zanta. brother who hailed from the South Pole. Mantar was a uh, kind of furry, I think. Oz was Oz from The Wizard of Oz. Oh, no. T.L. Hopper was an angry Terrible. player. The Goon was an angry hockey player. Knuckleball Schwartz was an angry... Baseball? Eric Rowan carried around a spooky <laughs> mystery like cage for three cosplay. months. And ooh, what's inside? It was a spider. It was a fucking plastic spider and I'm still angry about it. Friar Ferguson. There is no way. They couldn't even like bring a snake, a real snake or a real spider like there is no way it was a plastic one after that you can just send him to the asylum it was a very large monk who would do things like this for some oh. reason a depiction of a sexually promiscuous clergyman struck a nerve with the catholic church and the gimmick was oh, for a reason just one match with that same what wrestler, do you think is the reason a few months later as bastion booger a large man with poor hygiene who enjoyed eating however Ew. unlike Friar Ferguson, Ew, why would booger you do this to yourself as an image and beloved by fans enjoying years of popularity before no way. finally fighting Shawn Michaels to a 60-minute draw at WrestleMania 12. No way, people Some of that were enjoying did not that. happen. Seven was a spooky man who could fly and would... steal your children? I think that's what was going on here. Oh and my god. On board with that, neither could Dustin Rhodes. You can take this silly-looking thing, Seven, and shove it I'm up your ass. Your Beaver Cleavage was to this guy. a parody of the 1957 sitcom Leave it to Beaver, in which a wrestler played ah. a mentally disabled, incestuous version of the little boy. Actually, you know what? Oh my god. No, no, we're done. We're done. Oh my I'm, god. I'm, I'm, I'm done. Yeah, I really don't think the internet that like today we can't no how did and how is this even allowed oh my god yeah in this age and in this time we're not talking about this anymore that's it go home everybody wrestling is very silly and i love it but it if is. these are all bad heels <laughs> what separates good heels from everything we've just talked about oh and to talent that, like a balance between being a great talent at being mean towards the fans without getting affected and also having this storyline of villainy that doesn't only starts with you becoming a villain but maybe shifting and becoming worse and worse and worse that's my opinion
take a look at a wrestler who has the ability to turn an entire arena against him with just Randy Orton. a few words. Video Undertaker. Games! Video games! Yeah, I love video games, and then I lost my virginity. <laughs> My favorite thing about AEW's Maxwell Jacob Friedman isn't any of his solid in-ring work or even his excellent heel promos, but how he messes with our perception of him. On TV, he plays a nightmare combination of every suburban asshole rich kid okay. and every douchebag frat boy you've ever met. Met. Okay. But it's off TV that he's at his most interesting. He's oh, infamous okay. for staying in character at all times. That's the thing. That he will actually ignore fans at public events and even outright insult them. Hey Josh, it's MJF. Heard you're a big fan. Guess what? I don't give a shit. Go fuck yourself. That's the best there was one incident ever. last year where he gave the middle finger to a little boy at a fan meet and greet, and when the boy's they father took that. Twitter upset, he simply replied, and I quote, fuck them kids. Besides it being objectively hilarious, I think what MJF is doing here Dude, is- Dude, you literally went to a WWE event with your kids, and you are posing next to someone who is a heel, and you know how pretentious he is, and then you're like, ah, oh, so offended, let me go to the internet and talk about it. Why did you not address it there? Why did you not tell him? Not cool, bro. But you still posted the picture, and you still tweeted about it. I'm sorry, but what is wrong with the internet? Why do we have to, like, just pussy out of situations and go and talk to our internet like back in the day when you go to your mommy as a kid mommy like what is going on why is that a thing fascinating unlike a stage play where the boundaries of what's real and what aren't are very clearly defined wrestling is a lot blurrier and particularly with heels unlike villains in a stage play heels can see us hear us and interact with us in other words they exist True. in our reality despite True. being fictional personas and so there's a very soft boundary between artificial hatred and real but it's that boundary oh that sweetie MJF definitely real with the fan distorting in 2018, the oh, documentary from his Kenny side. Johnson okay. released a 30-minute film on MJF. What kind of kid? Johnson's I think he was a gamer really kid. Really heartfelt documentaries on the lives of rising indie wrestling stars, often giving these really poignant looks at the people behind the personas. And that's how his video on MJF starts. But after a little while, things start to get strange. Why? Despite it being a documentary, MJF insists on doing the same takes over and over and over. His home is filled with stock photos. He has these bizarre shifts in mood and we hear his parents, but we never see them. And the more time Johnson spends okay. with MJF, That's weird. the more he starts to realize that everything about him from the house he lives in to the Fake. people that live there, it's all a bizarre fabrication. And when Johnson starts to peel back that illusion, he catches a glimpse of something much more unstable and dangerous. No part of me believes that this isn't a work, that it wasn't a collaboration between Johnson and MJF, but it's also this kind of fascinating piece of media where a deeply unstable yeah, looks fictional like persona apart. is trying to convince Even that us dog that is like, what am I doing there? Person. And it gives you just enough room to believe that maybe Bro, something is really very wrong with Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Okay, stop this with that creepy music. This is the line that separates good heels from bad. Because in order for us to hate them, we first have to believe them. Oh my god. Take a character like Bray Wyatt. How oh, easily could he have... This video was created three years ago. This segment is gonna make us sad. ...landed in our hall of terrible wrestling heels. A maniacal children's TV host that transforms into a scary monster. It's ridiculous but never as ridiculous as it should be because from the moment Wyatt introduced his fiend persona, everything about him from the way he walked to the way he talked to how he moved in changed. the ring, it all changed and became so That's eerily he's talented. that it lets he's like a talent into he was this a talented actor in a way that feels real even if it obviously isn't. But what if Puts it was like real? So much what power happens into when it. a heel crosses that boundary between fiction and reality? Oh, oh, 
it happens all the time this is the thing about actors when they play these type of roles like let's say for example the joker like the guy killed himself because of his acting that role of someone who is a lunatic and it drove him mad basically your brain is just a thing that it's a muscle it's a thing that can literally believe anything you put into it and that's why you have to be really careful with the word that you use talking about yourself and how you perceive the world um and from which perspective like pessimist optimist like you definitely need to be an optimist optimist person or optimistic uh, because otherwise like it's like just a small line between you acting and actually becoming that person and starts using real life hatred oh. the montreal screw job took place between brett the hitman heart and the heartbreak kid sean michaels two supremely talented wrestlers both at the peak of the wwf <laughs> the only problem being also. that they fucking hated each other in real life Michaels had previously refused to drop the championship to Hart, and now Hart was refusing to do the same for Michaels, and especially in front of his hometown Montreal crowd. The problem, though, was that Hart was Wait, about even to leave something WWF technically, for I didn't its rate biggest it. rival, and management could not let him leave the champion, and so a scheme was put in place. Cute. At this point in the match, Michaels has Hart locked in Hart's own finishing move, the oh. sharpshooter. And the agreed upon finish between Michaels, Hart, and management was that Hart would reverse this into his own sharpshooter, submitting Michaels and giving up the belt the next night. But instead, <gasps> the bell was rang at this precise moment, making it look like Hart had tapped out. Hart was beyond furious. He had been lied to and lost the title in the most humiliating way possible to a man he hated. And the Montreal crowd turn poisonous on oh. Michaels. If you're a fan of wrestling, I'm sorry you had to hear this for the 12th time, but if you're not, I need to drive home that this was all real and not part of oh WWF's fictional storyline. And so, That's years crazy. later, when Michaels returned to that same arena, the Montreal crowd still held a hatred for him that was so pure, cool. and That's Michaels crazy. leverages it to do some utterly insane heel work mocking the crowd, telling them how they would never see Bret Hart in a WWE ring again. When suddenly, wow. Hart's music hits and the roof comes Woo! off the fucking arena as the people I of Montreal it. wait for their hero. And they wait, and they wait, and they wait. Don't tell me he doesn't show up. And... Got your hopes up just a little bit, didn't I? No, 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 no way. <coughs> Dying. No way. What? Brother, what? That is so mean. I would hate him so much. Damn. Absolutely no way. Nuclear. They would crush real genuine Oh my god, the audience would cry. I would cry. I would cry, yeah. I would cry. But what if we take this one step further? I would genuinely cry. What if that character wasn't fictional? What oh, if that yeah. character was New Jack? Uh -oh. To understand New Jack, you need to know First three things. One, he did not like white people. Two, he performed in front of the predominantly white, predominantly redneck audiences of Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Uh -oh. And three, he delivered this promo following the horrific murder of O.J. Simpson's oh. wife, Nicole Brown Simpson, and her romantic partner, Ron Goldman. I'd like to send a special yeah, yeah. shout out to my homeboy, O.J. Simpson. Keep up the good work, baby. Two less, we got to worry about. You understand? 
Keep up the good work. New Jack leveraged racial tension in a way that oh, is racist. so uncomfortable to watch, but was so effective. The Knoxville, Tennessee audiences hated New Jack, but he thrived on that hatred. He loved drawing out the most extreme reactions possible, and it began to fuel his matches, which over the course of his career would grow more violent and unhinged, to the point that the staged violence stopped being staged at all. He viciously beat a 17 Maybe year old boy so badly that the boy never wrestled again. Oh, He'd no. legitimately tried to kill Whoa. a wrestler he had a dispute with. And at one point when an opponent upset him, he took out a knife and began to stab him over and over and over. This is a violent person masquerading as a wrestler, and people could feel that. People were afraid of New Jack. And while, honestly, I find a lot oh, bro, of what he that, did deeply no deplorable, way. New Jack does show that there are heels able to operate on a level beyond hate, fear. And to show you how powerful fear can be in heel work, we need to talk about one of the only other people able to do this. We need to talk about the king. What it's king? difficult to grasp what Minoru Suzuki is when you first see him, but this man scares the shit out of me. Oh my me. god, yeah, watching he does look Watching a Minoru Suzuki scary. match is like watching a spider pick the limbs off a fly. He brutalizes his opponents. Oh my god, his hairstyle them, too. Mocking them, dissecting them with a glee that feels so Oh my god, his face! To the point it comes across as disturbingly real. Watch this forearm strike on Tomohiro Ishii and tell me you don't feel like you're watching one man inflicting violence on another. <laughs> watching your favorite wrestler face Minoru Suzuki <laughs> is less about hoping they win and more hoping they survive. And that's all intentional. Suzuki's storyline is that he was forced out of New Japan in 2015, only to return two years later, driven by a single-minded ambition. Take the icons of New Japan Pro Wrestling and break them. Destroy the pillars that hold up the company and rebuild it in his own image. This storyline reached a horrifying climax last year when Suzuki oh. locked his gaze on Jushin Thunder Liger. What is that, if brother? Suzuki You're not a Power Ranger. Evil in New How Japan, can he fight in that? Liger is the good, an old school okay. legend who's been with How the company since the good? early Look at 80s and wrestled scary. for a thousand matches. No one is more oh, beloved and respected than Liger. Whoa. However, late last year, he announced that after 35 years of wrestling, he'd be retiring. And Why? something about this incensed Suzuki, who set about physically erasing Liger, assaulting him, torturing him, dragging out the very worst of the old hero uh -oh. of New Japan in a feud that genuinely felt like two men trying to kill each other. Uh -oh. The story culminated in a match at King of Pro Wrestling, where the two would face each other one final time. Liger fights valiantly, but he cannot stand against the violent madness of the king, and he falls. But it's what followed that would be remembered as possibly the most shocking moment of Suzuki's career. Why? He approaches What's Liger, happened? steel chair in hand. Oh no. And... Huh? Okay. What? And in that instant, the violent persona and all the awful things he's done, it all falls away. Yeah. And all that's left is a man in his 50s saying goodbye to someone he deeply respects. Oh. fictional story. See, he's not a real hater possible to pull apart yeah and it's beautiful you can feel the emotion everywhere here in oh. the voice of the commentators in the tears of the audience i don't know if it's the music the i'm talking suzuki yeah. this is the mark of the best heels in wrestling yeah ones who are able to take something real and blend it into their character to the point that no matter how villainous they are 
there's still something human there to grasp onto. Yes. And before we go into the final section Aww. of this video, there is one more wrestler I want to talk about. Brandon. The one who embodies this maybe better than anyone else. Okay. Oh no, now we're turning. Man, the, the way he Getsu plays with the music. is sheer chaos. Despite the concepts of face and heel being a little softer in Japan than they are here, Kagetsu is nothing but a straight up villain. One whose vicious, yeah. brutal in-ring style let her carve a knife right through the heart of World Wonder Ring stardom. A Joshi wrestling promotion, meaning- Man, I love her outfits though. Can this fly go wrestle away and die? brutal and hard-hitting wrestling on the planet, and Kagetsu well, is the chaotic heel so embodiment of that. As she dismantles her opponents with razor sharp kicks, oh battles them with God. weapons, and spits mist in their faces, oh. nothing is off limits to Kagetsu. Oh. At one point, she even made a running joke out of hanging her rival Mayu oh my God, from balconies hello. and then kicking her downstairs. The moment Kagetsu became a true monster, however, came in 2017 when she took control of the heel faction Oedo Tai. And next to the prim and proper pop idols of stardom, Oedo Tai were the freaks, the outcasts. Like Kigetsu herself, oh. Oedo Tai weren't necessarily evil, they just didn't give a fuck what anyone else thought and were going to have okay. fun at other people's expense. They'd humiliate their Ew! opponents, even performing Ew! elaborate dance routines Ew! because who is gonna stop them? At one point, they even dressed up as the Straw Hat Pirates, which honestly has no relevance to any of this whatsoever, but I think it's cool. I and think over it's the cool next too. two years, Kagetsu, <laughs> surrounded by Oedo Tai, would run riot over the company and rise to the very peak of stardom. Kagetsu ripping the world title away from Tony Storm, beginning a championship reign that would last 300 days, Ooh. in which time Kagetsu would become the brutal final boss of stardom. Yeah. An impenetrable wall that any rising star would have to break through, but so few did. Kigetsu felt indestructible, Oof. able to absorb massive amounts oh. of damage to the point that you could even see the look of horror on her opponent's Oof. faces, desperate to Oof. find a way to finally oh my God, she's so the strong. demon queen of stardom. And the result was matches so intense and emotional that you really felt like you Oof. were watching two performers Ooh. struggle to break their own limits. With Kigetsu's message at the end of these matches always the same. If you hate me, then get better than me. Oh the my god, that's Kigetsu actually so, so real inspirational. Is she was. From the early days of her career, she set about with the goal of ushering in a new era of Joshi wrestling. An industry still being dominated by the Out same respect stars to Satomura, it had been she's a legend and I love her. And Satomura. so Kigetsu became a villain. All the heelish shit she'd do, all the brutality, all the cheating, it was all in the name of pushing her opponents as far as they could go, forcing them to become stronger so that they might one day surpass her and become the future of Joshi Wrestling. In reality, Kagetsu is known for taking younger performers under her wing, raising them up and helping them grow. She even became the head coach of the promotion in 2018, spending her time shaping the next generation of young female wrestlers. And so, whether you view Kagetsu's matches as real or staged, either way, you are watching a woman fight for the future of Joshi Wrestling, and I think that's really fucking beautiful. Tragically, on Christmas Eve of last year, after an absolute war with her old rival Mayu Iwatani, oh. Kigetsu announced that after 11 years of wrestling, she'd be retiring. And it's oh. sad watching her retirement match as she takes on the entire roster of stardom in a gauntlet match, oh. slowly being worn down until finally the invincible final boss oh. of stardom falls. I say tragic because what kills me about Kigetsu is that she's virtually unknown outside hardcore circles and particularly outside Japan, fighting for yeah, a much smaller promotion so than cool. any other wrestler we've talked about and because of that, I don't think she's ever reached the level of notoriety she deserves, yeah. meaning there's a chance that this video could be the most Western exposure she ever gets. No so, way. So please, if you take nothing else away Aww. from today, 
remember Kagetsu. She deserves yeah, to go down. Yeah, I will. All time great. I will. In wrestling. I hope by now it's becoming obvious that heels can make us feel all kinds of things. Anger, hatred, fear, hell, even love. But there's one final aspect of wrestling villains I want to talk about, uh -oh. and that is the heel turn. This is when a face, a good guy wrestler, falls to the oh, dark yeah. side and becomes a heel. Yeah, and if that you've happened right, a lot, it can be right? such a powerful storytelling tool that it's resulted in some of the most infamous and shocking moments in wrestling. And the last thing I want to talk about today is a story centered around one of these moments. Okay. January 4th of this year, Tetsuya Naito is ago. the fourth entrance in the Double Gold Dash, a hyper elite four man tournament between the very best of New Japan. I heard about designed him. To crown I watched the video. single undisputed champion. But for Naito, it's oh, been no, a, it's a long different road that's brought him here. His early career the was Naito. disastrous, rejected by fans, disregarded by his promotion, and it was only after a trip to Mexico that Naito returned as a spiteful heel. And he mm. did so with the help of his best friend and running mate, a man known only as Evil, the King of Darkness. A oh my silent, god, that's like his whole name. Time, was one of Naito's only friends on the planet. Together, the two had formed the heel faction Los Ingobernables de Japón, the Ungovernable, a home for the most rebellious <laughs> and unruly wrestlers of the Japanese wrestling industry. Unlike other factions, LIJ were small and tightly knit, each new member a big deal, adding something unique and different, like the Ice Cold Sonata, whose lethargic, devastating style would lead to him forming a tag team with Evil and capturing multiple tag titles, or Hiromu, the young, explosive wild man of the group who would run riot over New Japan's junior heavyweight division. People loved LIJ. Despite the fact that they were basically heels, the crowd never reacted to them that way. And I think that was because if you felt weird or different or like an outsider, LIJ captured that feeling and made it their strength, signified by their silent Los Ingobernables fist salute. And for years, that's how they were, the star Naito backed by his LIJ brethren. But as the years went on, Naito's dream of being the best started to fade. Aww. Despite his popularity, his title runs were short and infrequent, and worse, he was constantly in the shadow of his bitter rival, Kazuchika Okada, the rainmaker and longest reigning IWGP heavyweight champion of all time. And so, when the two met in the finals of the Double Gold Dash tournament, it felt like a last stand for Naito. If he couldn't do it here, Aww. then this could be the end. But after a hellacious battle that pushed he both did. men to the brink, Naito did it. Yay! Becoming the first double champion of all time, and finally standing at the very peak of New Japan Pro Wrestling only to be brought crashing down are you kidding Kenta, me the current leader of the bullet club the bullet club are were you and are the biggest heel faction in new japan vicious cold and oh. massive where lij had the fist salute bullet club had their two sweet salute. <laughs> kenta humiliating naito in what should have been so the greatest moment of his entire life yeah but kenta is not our villain today Naito would defeat him a month later, where okay. finally his championship reign could truly begin. And then the virus happened and New Japan Corona, had to shut down. Yeah. Poor Naito. Months later, New Japan would reopen with the New Japan Cup, a 32-man tournament, the winner of which would go on to face Naito for his double championship. Which is why it was so unsurprising oh, to see Okada so make it all the Okada. way to the finals. Dude, but why do people don't dress up like that the all the ring time? From the Rainmaker, that a more disturbing story was playing out. Because you see, the other finalist was Evil. Oh. See, at this point, Evil had stood behind Naito for five years. And as Naito's star uh -oh. rose, 
evil just watched from the shadows. Uh -oh. 2019 having been an especially bad year for evil, Why? seeing him take several devastating singles losses, and worse, he'd arguably been surpassed by the younger members of LIJ. Hiromu had captured the junior heavyweight title multiple times, and Evil's own tag partner, Sonata, had been finding wow, cool massive jacket. success as a singles wrestler. Oh man, it's so hard Even to see everyone around you Okada succeeding. For the world title. <sighs> People were now beginning to talk about Bro, the way they are dressing. It's like anime characters. What is this? America, work on your costumes. I love American costumes, but like. Compared to these ones, they're on a whole new level. Evil as the least important member of LIJ. And that failure seeped inside Evil. Mm. Evil entered the New Japan Cup with a choice. Fade into nothing or become something also, different. Evil attacks we, oh. the tournament with a violence that shocked oh. hands, breaking his opponents, leaving them injured and oh. unable to come. Oh. And so a thick tension hung in the air when in the semi-finals he met his own tag team partner, Sonata. But it didn't matter. Uh -oh. Evil destroyed Sonata oh, as the no. crowd watched in silent horror oh. as he stepped over the body of his LJ brother and into the finals. Where in the most shocking victory of the tournament, Evil would defeat Okada meaning he would now face Naito for the championship oh. in just 24 hours. Oh After the match, my god. Naito, uh, look One friend, huh? his eyes, comes to the ring to congratulate Evil and celebrate the first ever All in Gobernables title And match. he's like, yeah, yeah, talk your talk. I will destroy you. And offers Evil the LIJ fist salute, just nah. like they've done so many times nah, before. Nah, he's not taking that. And Evil he was in the shadow. would answer with the symbol of the Bullet Club. Oh. I've watched LIJ for years. Destroy. I've seen them live. I own their merch. This moment was heartbreaking. <laughs> Evil walking away from the man he'd been through so much with now a member of the bullet club that's so the mean. next night the two would meet but Again? what awaits naito is a brand new evil flanked by the bullet club everything about the man naito once knew was gone evil's old lij entrance music replaced by a song that sounds like the world is ending Whoa. and for naito it is Heartbroken oh no. and betrayed by his friends, Naito cannot focus. And Evil uses that to destroy him with oh a no. hatred of someone who'd spent years oh no. being forgotten. Evil tearing Ouch. away his double championship Oof. and everything Naito had spent his entire life working towards. And in that moment, the King of Darkness ascends to become the God of New Japan. After the match, Hiromu, the youngest member of LIJ, confronts Evil, demanding how he could do something like this. And Evil just responds. Oh! oh. Wow! Just so mean! Leaving LIJ and the world of New Japan in flames. Devastated. What I really love about this story is how it took five years But let's of be history. honest, like with Evil, like they are the ones who betrayed him first. You know, he didn't have a choice and yes, he didn't have to go that far. But also, there is always a redemption arc. <laughs> At the end of the day, that's the thing with WWE and pro wrestling to create this heartbreaking narrative where a person betrays everything they know in order to not be forgotten. And because of that, evil feels unbeatable, but that's now the storyline of New Japan. Oh, that was three years and ago. Exactly I guess something happened exactly how Vader happened felt when he destroyed then. Inoki 30 years ago. But the oh, thing yeah. about that story is that when the two rematched a year later, it felt like watching this Japanese hero climb a mountain. Like we were witnessing our hero struggle to overcome something frightening and mm. real and impossible. 
And when he finally does, when he finally defeats the man who ruined him, there's a real euphoria to it. Even now, 30 years later. So bloody. And that's the thing. Heroes are only as great as the challenges they overcome. <sighs> but to me, there's something more to heels too. Oh my I think God, the appeal bleeding. of wrestling, when you really peel it all back, is it's just a story of characters, of people. And the appeal of heels, personally, I spend a lot of time worrying about what people think of me. And again, a lot of people do. And so for me, when I see these big, impossible villainous characters put everything they have into showing the world what they are, no matter what anyone thinks, I think there's something kind of beautiful about that. Yeah. And so, no matter how much heels try and make us hate them, yeah, hell, we, we, it's because of that that I can't help but love them. Yeah, I love them per se, but Friends, they, thank you for joining. they do add different shades to the world and to the entertainment. Fly, get your own room, get your own show. I cannot get rid of it. I would have to spend the whole day just trying to get rid of it, opening all the windows, all the doors, and just... And I tried, I really did for like five minutes and then I gave up because I'm too lazy, but it's there. It's gonna be a part of the youtube community here in bosnia until i move out to germany i guess either way guys um back to the video like when it comes to villains they add shades to the world they add different um and there is like redemption arc always because we do know that people are never always like 100 good or 100 bad and yes some things that happen throughout our life shapes who we are but it is our own choices at the end that makes our life the way it is and that is the thing no matter what bad thing happens to you at the end of the day it is your choice do you want to become a villain of your life and your story or do you want to become the hero of it ah, i need a hero in my life to destroy this why i need this thing why i i really don't smell bad why are you gravitating towards me i know like i'm, I'm maybe my content is shit but like i'm not I'm just joking. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more. And also, if you want to check out more content, maybe this is on my Patreon. But if not, check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash support bunny. Have a wonderful day. I love your faces and see you tomorrow with a brand new video. Bye. Cheers. Mm -hmm.